Glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to Uraho the Way, the symposium on St. Saverius the Great of Antioch. And today is the last and fourth session of the virtual symposium on St. Saverius of Antioch. And we are so delighted to present to you our um, resource person, Dr. Yuhana Yusuf, the Associate Professor at St. Athanasius College, University of Divine Melbourne, and Senior Lecturer at the Department of Eastern Studies at St. Ignatius Theological Seminary, University College, Stockholm. But before that, we have, we are so delighted and excited to have our Bishop, more Timotheus Thomas, the Metropolitan of Cotton Diocese of the Syriac Orthodox Church and the Secretary of the Regional Holy Episcopal Synod. And uh, let me welcome uh, our beloved Bishop, Archbishop Mar Timotheus Thomas, as well as Dr. Johanna Yusuf. And Dr. Uh, Mar Timotheus Thomas will be giving us the concluding message on St. Severius of Antioch, this lecture series and Episcopal blessings as well. Welcome to the many. Thank you. And many, you can go ahead and give the message. Should I speak first or Professor? Speak? We can do. You can do it right now, or we can we, we can wait and then. Okay, 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 okay. I understand. Uh, Professor Doctor Ian Yosef, and for the Franklin Matthew and all others who attend this uh, uh, seminar on Severus of Antioch, and this is the concluding seminar. I'm delighted to say a few words. Uh, as concluding remarks on Severus of Antioch. Born around 456 in Sosopolis, Severus uh, had his legal training both at Alexandria and at Beirut. Interesting to see that Severus was not a Christian in his early days. He became a Christian or he accepted baptism later. And uh, uh, his legal studies and his theological formation were uh, developed side by side. There is a statement in the uh, biography of Zacharias Scholasticus that on all the weeks, five days, they would, uh, they used to uh, learn uh, law uh, and rhetoric and during the weekend, they learned uh, theology, testifies uh, Zacharia Scholasticus, the friend of, the, uh, of Severus. And he wrote the first biography of uh, Severus. And we get much information from that uh, biography. And from that only we get the uh, information that uh, uh, Severus was not a born Christian. That is, his parents were not Christians. And he accepted the Christian faith rather late. And uh, during, the, during his studies, he was fascinated to uh, read Libanius, the Antiochian orator, and uh, uh, Scholasticus uh, explains that he persuaded Severus to read 
with the great Cappadocian fathers. And then he started questions and he was much uh, enamored by the writings of Basil and Gregory of Nazianzen. And Zaverius uh, states in one of his autobiographical references that these great fathers would be his uh, judges at the last judgment. A very interesting statement. Severus of Antioch was a staunch opponent of the Chalcedonian formula in two nations. Yet, two offices, one out of two natures, was the formula uh, of the anti calcedonians and the tomb of Leo, which was accepted in the uh, Chalcedon 451, was not acceptable to the Eastern Christians because they depended on the symbol or creed of Nicaea and it was seen as the only interpretation uh, on which uh, the nature of Christ could be uh, explained. The Edict of 7 February 452, Emperor Marcian and Valentinian the third enjoined the subjects to obey the decisions of the council. There were turbulence in Palestine, Egypt, and Syria. Juvenile of Jerusalem was forced to flee from Jerusalem after participating in the uh, Chalcedon and when he came back to Jerusalem. There were repeated efforts from the imperial authorities to bring a solution to the problem. Henoticon of Emperor Zeno of 482 AD was such an effort. Unfortunately, none of this could bring forth the uh, unity. I, don't, I do not want to go into the history of uh, the, uh, uh, the, the controversies that were going on. Severus became the Patriarch of Antioch in 512. Uh, 512, and he continued as patriarch till 518, and after that he was expelled from Antioch, and his uh, scholarly homilies, I, I think more than 100 uh, homilies, 125 also, homilies in some of these homilies, he makes autobiographical references and his uh, letters, which are large in numbers, unfortunately many of these are lost in Greek, in which he wrote. Many are preserved in Syriac and uh, uh, I think most of his writings are available in Coptic language. His legal training ha had his impression or has the impact on his writings, the precision and the accuracy of his arguments are 
very interesting. Also, we could see that Peter the Iberian uh, made a great impact on him. He only received him in one of the monasteries in Gaza. And Peter, uh, who became in the Petriarch later and who, uh, who is known as the Peter the Fuller, uh, completing the Trisagion, crucified for us was added by Peter the Fuller and uh, his influence on uh, Severus was profound. He thank, had thank you, Tirmeni. Times the outstanding scholar Severus had to flee from uh, Antioch and he uh, lived the rest of his life in Egypt. Of course, when he was in Antioch as well as in, uh, uh, in the monastery of Gaza, he was very active and he was he was an excellent uh, uh, bishop as well as uh, patriarch who guided the, paved the way of the uh, anti calcedonian churches in a, a tremendous way through his thoughts, writings, and articulated, articulations. In Egypt, he faced many uh, difficult situations. He escaped the authorities and uh, lived a very, uh, all throughout, he lived a very tumultuous uh, life. But finally, his last days were in Egypt. And the Coptic Church, uh, along with uh, the Syrian Orthodox Church, uh, gives uh, give much importance to Severus of Antioch. And on this occasion, uh, let us study more the history of the period, as well as the uh, uh, the, the depth, the in-depth uh, approach that Severus uh, made to, inter to interpret Jesus Christ in a very, very uh, uh, competent manner. Also, it is interesting to note that modern historians and modern theologians have uh, studied uh, more Severus uh, very much, especially the studies in French are very uh, uh, profound also uh, in German and uh, in, in English also there are very uh, large volumes of uh, Severus study. We should see the failure of the times. The Byzantine church very vehemently targeted the anti-Chalcedonian churches and we could say destroyed many of the uh, Oriental Orthodox churches. Coptic church was uh, much decimated the Syrian Orthodox Church became very less in numbers. Uh, also, we should see the sad history when Islam 
uh, defeated the Constantinople and the great the patriarchate suffered and the uh, the great church in Asia Minor was wiped out. So it was a very sad history. The incarnate Christ, if both factions could have accepted humbly that we are not in a position to fully expound in the nature of the incarnate Jesus Christ and thereby refrained from the sad history, it would have been a, a great thing. I would say the, uh, uh, the church in Asia Minor would have survived if that humility were uh, approached by both sides. History is history and we cannot change it. We could learn from history and we could uh, uh, make our new beginnings uh, receiving uh, insights when, from history. So when we study more severus deeply, I hope that all of us would be uh, enlightened by the great uh, scholar who lived in the uh, post-Chalcedonian -Chal period and contributed to the thoughts of uh, Christian uh, theology. With these words, I want to uh, wish the seminar all the best. Of course, this is the last session of the seminar, and we are going to hear from Professor uh, Dr. Johanna uh, Yusuf. And uh, once again, uh, I, I express my happiness to see the program. Thank you so much, uh, uh, beloved Tirumeni, uh, for those uh, great words and blessing the seminar. And you rightly paved the way uh, to Dr. Yuhana, um, you know, talk, and he will be focusing his talk on the works of Saint Severius of Antioch in the Coptic Church. So without any delay, uh, Dr. Yuhano, Dr. Yusuf, it's your time and please enlighten with your knowledge and uh, the works and ministry, the work and ministry of Saint Severius of Antioch in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Okay, thank you, Father. Thank you, Your Grace, for your uh, words and uh, just i would like to ask a, a question should we call severus of antioch and was severus of antioch is from antioch this is uh, will be my uh, main approach normally when uh, you are affiliated to a place that means you are uh, not from this place uh, how can i say for example here i am in sweden and everybody here uh, said yes johanna the egyptian but if i go to egypt nobody will say johanna the egyptian they will call me johanna from sweden exactly the same for severus of antioch he is uh, is called uh, of antioch but in fact uh, uh, nearly half of his life was in Egypt. And that's why we have a, a great veneration in the Coptic Church to Severus of Antioch. Uh, Severus of Antioch could be expressed in different ways. So the first, 
his life. So his life uh, survived in uh, Coptic. So the life of, uh, we have, uh, for Severus, we have four biographies. One is written by his friend, Zacharius Scholasticus, and it was published uh, in Patrologia Orientalis and in Syriac, and it stopped until the elevation of Severus to the seat of Antioch. The other one is by his uh, friend, who is uh, John of Vet Aftonia. The whole text was published in, uh, in Syriac. However, we have some fragments in Coptic. Another text, which published by Athanasius Barjamula, or Athanasius the camel driver, and this one, he was, uh, it survived in uh, uh, fragments in Coptic from Upper Egypt, that means from the south of Egypt, and in Lower Egypt, that means one fragment from Lower Egypt, which we call Buhairic. And we have the whole text uh, survive also in Arabic, which I have the honor to edit it from uh, three manuscripts, one from the Coptic uh, uh, collection of the monastery of St. Anthony, one uh, from the Coptic Patriarchate, and one from the monastery of the Syrian, or the uh, monastery of St. Uh, the Virgin Mary, uh, called the monastery of the Syrian. And uh, this, from this text, the text uh, in Arabic, it was translated into Giz. The Giz is uh, a classical language of the Ethiopian church. So, and there are some texts, for example, we have a homily by uh, George Bishop of the Arabs, uh, which uh, was published in Syriac by Kathleen uh, McVeigh, and we have uh, another by Syriacus uh, of Tecrete, and uh, this text is not published yet. So this is our information about the life of Severus. However, uh, when, we can, uh, when we talk about the life of Severus, we should uh, we can call all the biographies as a second-hand information. But what is first has information is the texts that were written by Severus himself uh, regarding himself. And this is very important thing. So uh, we have an autobiographical section in the homily of uh, praising Leontius of Tripoli, and this uh, survived. We have the text in, Buh in uh, Coptic, uh, Syriac, that means the language of Upper Egypt, and we have the text in uh, Syriac. But the advantage of the Coptic text is that we have exactly a part that Severus himself is talking about his conversion to Christianity, and he said that uh, while I was here in uh, Tripoli, I visited uh, the shrine of uh, Leontius of Tripoli, and this uh, made me uh, to, uh, to convert to Christianity, which means that according to Severus himself, he was not baptized until the age of 30, until he finished his studies, in Alexandria and also in uh, Beirut where he studied. So uh, for Severus, he studied uh, uh, what's called philosophy and he studied law, and which means that he was in the higher class of, uh, and that is reflected by his intellectual mind and how he can uh, treat it theological things in both ways, in a different, uh, that means in a way very uh, deep as a philosopher and also very shrewd and very clear as a lawyer, you know. Lawyer is always 
thinks that it should be something like this. So this is what we have. Another thing that we have as a first-hand information about uh, Severus' life is uh, a letter that he sent to one of his uh, uh, friends. And in uh, this, he mentioned that when Theodosius asked the, the father of the uh, Sketis that he would like to have a, a son uh, to be to inherit his uh, kingdom, etc. So the father of the church of uh, Sketis, what in Matron, which between Cairo and Alexandria, about 100 kilometers from both sides. They said, no, even if you will marry 10 times, you will not have a child, and that's it. And this was a, an oral tradition in the monastery uh, in the desert of Sketis, uh, Wadi Natrun, and it, uh, it, after that, it was written in the biography of the uh, 49 martyrs who were uh, attacked by the barbarians and killed them. The barbarians, that means from the west of Egypt. So here we have that uh, Severus of Antioch is referring to an oral tradition even uh, before it's, uh, it, it was mentioned in the Coptic text. That means Severus had a first-hand information about a local tradition in Sketis, which means that he, Severus was already in, uh, in contact with the monks, and he was already, he knew uh, even their, uh, uh, their local tradition, their oral tradition. Uh, this means that Severus, that's why in uh, his text, Severus is always presented in the history of the patriarch in three ways. Either as a standard of uh, orthodoxy, that means we should follow the face of Severus, the history of the patriarch is a compilation uh, done in the 11th century, but it was in fact, uh, written before this, and it was done to uh, to record all the life of the patriarches of the Coptic Church. So we find Severus is presented in three ways, either as a standard of orthodoxy or as a venerated saint. And finally, we find two quotations from the works of Severus in the history of the Patriarch, saying that uh, Severus, uh, when there is a conflict between uh, two people, say so. The one uh, of the of this group referred to the work of Severus, saying that the great father Severus mentioned so and so and so and so, and referring to a text from Severus, which means that uh, Severus was already uh, known to the history of the Patriarch, and it was highly venerated even for the Patriarch. And that's why we have in the 11th century a book called The Profession of the Fathers. It's a compilation of the text uh, of theological matters. It was done by uh, somebody just to show the faith of the Church of Alexandria. And in this, we have a, a very large chapter about Severus of Antioch and a quotation from his text. But also what we call the synodical letters exchanged between the patriarches of Alexandria and the patriarch of uh, the Syriac Church, they always refer to Severus, especially the Patriarch of Alexandria refer uh, to Severus to show his orthodoxy, while the Patriarch of the Syriac Church 
refer to Athanasius and Cyril, that means the Alexandrian, to show his orthodoxy. So each part show part of his orthodoxy by uh, quoting the father of the other church. This is a, a very important thing. Uh, studying Severus is in fact very important for us as in Severus we have an, one of his uh, most important work is a, a work called Philalithes, that means the lover of truth. And this book, uh, it was written around the year 509. Uh, in fact, wh while uh, Severus was in Constantinople, uh, in the time of Anastasius, somebody gave him this text showing that Severus is uh, 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 that Cyril talk about the two natures. So what uh, uh, Severus did, he took the whole book and he started to make what we can call nowadays a critical edition. What it means? That means he said, okay, for the first quotation, you say that uh, Cyril said so and so and so. While this quotation is not uh, said by, uh, by Cyril, but it is part from Cyril and part from another saint. And this one, it's a compilation from the Council of Chalcedon with another text. So he started to make a, a critical edition showing the text. This text survived uh, in two Syriac uh, manuscripts from the monastery of uh, Der Surian in uh, Skates, that means the uh, same as I mentioned, between Cairo and Alexandria, around 100 kilometers from both sides, and uh, a Western uh, uh, Maronite uh, priest when he came in the 18th century, he found this interesting book, so he took it and he took it with him, and uh, while he was uh, crossing the river uh, for unknown reason, the boat sank and he started to hire divers to bring the manuscripts, which means that part of the manuscript was uh, erased by the water. But later on, they tried to retreat it and they found that the text, uh, now it was edited by his spell. Fortunate enough that uh, while studying Severus, I found an extremely important witness from the 14th century in Arabic. But uh, this text, it was in fact representing another version, uh, different, slightly, uh, slightly different from the text uh, of the Syriac. So in some places, while we find, for example, that uh, uh, the Syriac text mentioned, for example, that Theodore uh, said so, we find that Theodore said so and so. And uh, sometimes when we find a quotation from the act of the council of Ephesus, we find that the quotation is different from the uh, uh, official acts of uh, of the Council of Ephesus and from the acts uh, that we have and from the Syriac text, which means that there was a kind of corpus of the text of uh, Severus in the Coptic Church. Uh, that's why I am saying that it was uh, important as a Coptic a church to understand Severus. Severus is not only uh, uh, just talking to intellectual, but he is also uh, uh, he was uh, he wrote poems and hymns. And in order to preserve the heritage of the Severus in the Coptic Church, we have what we call the Theotokia. Theotokia that means which is related to Theotokos, the mother of God. 
And uh, for this uh, the autokeia, they are inspired from the two uh, homilies by Severus reg uh, regarding the Virgin Mary, which the homily is 14 and the homily 67. And Severus, as a pastor and as a father of the church, always when he make a homily, he wrote also his homily. And this exactly what he found in the Coptic Theotokia, we find part from the text of Severus, and after that, an ex extract exactly taken from the hymn of Severus to correspond to this homily. Hence, it was uh, uh, the way for the Coptic Church to preserve the heritage of Severus, not only as a theological book, but also as something that we can uh, recite every day, especially, for example, I'm talking about the Theotokia of Sunday and the Theotokia of Tuesday, which uh, are taken uh, word by word from the work of uh, Severus, which means that it's a way, instead of giving to the congregation a theological book and who can read the theological books, no, they give them a way that they can recite, they can sing, they can say this hymn in uh, a pleasant way, and they, uh, hence they introduce all the faiths uh, written by Severus in the in, uh, indirectly to the dogma of the Coptic Church. Severus of Antioch also is not uh, 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 just uh, a saint. Uh, in the Coptic Church, we said that uh, Severus is. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, where Saint Severus uh, stay in Egypt and when he was in Egypt? When he was in Egypt, he was twice. The first time uh, during his study, and uh, it was in Alexandria, and he spent around five years. And uh, after his exile, that means from the year 518, to the year 538 until his death, uh, he was in Egypt. Where he was during this time, we know that uh, his death took place in a city called Sakha, not far from Alexandria. This is uh, attested. And uh, we have some other uh, indirect, uh, for example, as I mentioned, that he visit uh, uh, Skatis, uh, Wadi Natrun, and he, uh, by visiting this, he got uh, acquainted with the tradition, oral tradition of the 49 martyrs of uh, Skatis. So he visited Skatis, that's sure. He visited uh, Sakha, that's sure. And there are a lot of local tradition. For example, there is a tradition uh, that he visited also Asyut, where there was a monastery of uh, Asyut uh, in uh, a place called Der Rifa. And this monastery was named after Saint Severus. And unfortunately, uh, now it became a military zone and nobody can access to this but it was uh, a monastery and it has a lot of uh, monks up to the 15th century. After that, we don't know what's happened. It was a monastery in the, uh, you know, uh, in a cave in the mountain of uh, Der Riva. And uh, it's a very good place to see there. So it's just south of Cairo, about uh, 450 uh, kilometers south of Cairo. So this monastery was named after him, and according to the tradition that he spent some time in Asyut. 
So between Asyut and uh, Sakha, apparently he visited, and there is another tradition that he also uh, went even further to a place called uh, uh, Deir, uh, uh, Deir uh, in uh, Abutik. This also another place which uh, was known uh, that Severus spent there sometimes. So we have a lot of uh, things. This, uh, uh, the faith of Severus was still alive. Severus, as I said, it was also a part of, uh, you know, in the Coptic Church, when we, the priest, before uh, celebrating the Mass, there is an absolution. And this absolution, we call the absolution of the servants. And the first one, we said that the, uh, uh, may uh, your servant be absolved from the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, from Saint Mark, who is the founder of the Coptic Church, and from Saint Severus, even before the other uh, churches of uh, the other fathers of the church, such as uh, Athanasius, Cyril, uh, the other church. That means for from us we have the absolution after Saint Mark uh, Severus is considered as the second founder of the Coptic Church because of the fame of. Uh, of Severus and because of his writing and because of his uh, theological text, some texts were ascribed to Severus of Antioch. So, for example, we have a text, uh, a homily on the Archangel uh, Michael ascribed to uh, Severus of Antioch. And this text, uh, he narrates a story of a merchant who used to travel and etc. And this story, it's a beautiful story, but it's not the style of Severus of Antioch. There is another uh, uh, story also ascribed to Severus of Antioch about the discovery of the relics of uh, uh, Saint Claudius of uh, Antioch, and another story about uh, uh, our uh, encomium about uh, the Saint uh, Philotheus. These are always the texts that are ascribed to him. At his time, there was no uh, what we call copyright, so anybody can. Uh, just attribute anything to anybody. And that's why it was really important uh, because as he was so famous in the Coptic Church, that's why we have few texts uh, to... Is it belong to Severus, a homily on Archangel? Michael, no, it doesn't belong to Severus. It's not his style, but it could be uh, in a corpus of text that uh, we have all the text on the homilies of the Archangel Michael, they are all attributed to uh, to a patriarch or bishop in, ex in exile. So we have a homily by uh, Athanasius because he was exiled and returned back. We have uh, a homily ascribed to Severus because he was exiled and according to the text, because we say that it's ascribed to him, that he returned back to sea. We have a homily of uh, nearly all the patriarches and the bishop who are exiled, whether they return really to their uh, seats or not. We have this corpus because uh, the Archangel Michael is uh, called the defender of the uh, faithful, and he is the, the one who is defending the patriarchal. So 
all these tags are in one corpus and between among them we have the one of Severus of Antiochus. The uh, corpus uh, the ascribed to Severus of Antioch could be uh, categorized in three categories. The first one, the martyrs who are related to the saint, to the saint from Antioch. So we have Philoseus of Antioch, we have uh, Claudius of Antioch. So this is the first part. The second part, which as I said, the uh, the text on the biblical figures such as the Archangel Michael and uh, the text on the good thief. And sometimes we have a text ascribed to Severus, but it's not from uh, the earlier father or something like this, it's just by the scholars. So when I started to study the corpus of, of uh, Saint Severus of Antioch, I found manuscript 150 from the library uh, of Paris, the National Library of Paris. And I asked uh, our librarian to bring me this text. She was kind enough. And just from reading this text, the first three lines, I realized that couldn't be written by uh, Severus of Antioch, but it was written by Severus of Ashmonim. Why? Because it's written in Arabic and it is rhyming. That means, أكتب إليكم أيها الأباء العبيد المسيح بالقول الصحيح إلى etc. So you have this rhyme. And we know all that Severus wrote in uh, Greek and uh, his texts were published, uh, translated in uh, Syriac, in Coptic, sometimes in Armenian, etc. So we can't keep the rhyme in a text translated. It's very, very hard, if not impossible. So that's why this text is attributed uh, was because uh, the first one was Baron to send the name of Severus, recommendation to the priest by our father Severus. So he said, okay, our father Severus is Severus of Antioch. And later on, about the recommendation of the priest. But if you just read three lines, you realize that it's not his style. It is the style of another Severus, who was a bishop of Ashmane in Menia, in Egypt, 300 kilometers south. Century. That means the uh, Severus of Antioch. Because I have to make a dialogue, then a monologue for one hour. So, uh, Father, could you please uh, transfer? Question. Yeah, I found here some question. Yeah. Okay. It seems like we have some interruptions because of uh, uh, internet bandwidth issues, I guess. Um, so there are several questions from the audience. Uh, so I would like to, but I have a question. Like um, one of the key things that we need to keep in mind, like many of the works of that are attributed to church fathers may not be their original work. So it may be written by someone else, maybe a scholar, maybe a bishop or a priest and then attributed or dedicated to the church fathers. So 
how do you differentiate like is it is it by the style of writing or the form of writing or the content how do you approach uh, to make sure that the writing is a genuine writing by the church father or it's an attributed work okay yeah uh, so uh, I can repeat your question so I ask about the criteria of identifying a text, whether this is authentic Severian or it's not uh, Severian. Is this your question? Correct. Like, you know, th this is not just with Saint Severian, but, you know, it's it's a common thing. Like, you know, there are many texts that are attributed, uh, many prayers that are at attributed, but it may not be their original work. So how okay. do you differentiate? Okay. So, uh, uh, we have uh, several criteria. The first is the theme. So for example, nowadays, if you uh, read any newspaper in any part of the world, so you have the problem of coronavirus and uh, the COVID-19 and what we should do, the vaccine, the not vaccine, uh, uh, which vaccine, is, etc., etc. So for the last couple of years, any newspaper anywhere in this uh, planet, we have this at least uh, three, four articles, something like this. This is whatever uh, you are for or against and something like this. So in each time, there is what we call the theme, the master theme that we have during this time. And uh, in the time of uh, Severus, the, there were two problem about uh, the nature of Christ and about uh, what we call the Julian of Halicarnassus. And around these two, uh, two points, the work, the theological works of Severus are turning around. Even Severus, when he is talking about uh, a saint, for example, which he started with one thing and after that he returned back. Severus also is a good representative and perhaps the last representative of the Alexandrian uh, theological uh, school. That means the allegorical, uh, uh, the allegorical interpretation of the Bible. For example, in one of the hymn, uh, in one of his homilies, he uh, gave an interpretation of uh, at that time there will be five cities. Uh, talking the language of Canaan, and he said that uh, normally it should be the language of Israel. But uh, here he said, if we take it allegorically, uh, five cities, that means the five senses, that means the uh, seeing, smelling, uh, etc., etc., etc. So this is the five uh, senses, and he put this in relation with a Canaanite who asked, uh, Jesus said, yes, for, uh, yes, uh, master, uh, and the dogs uh, could uh, have the bites from the, uh, fallen from the table of their master. And he said that Egypt, which is called uh, at that time something super power, etc., etc., will have this humility of Canaan, and as a consequence, blessed is my uh, people in Egypt. So here you have uh, this kind of allegorical interpretation, putting one part of uh, the Bible with another part and extracting a conclusion. This is his style. But when he, he finds, for example, that uh, Severus is just uh, uh, going uh, like in the uh, praising a saint and saying that, that I found the, the relics of, we know that even if we find the name of Severus in the beginning of the text, we are sure that's not his style and is not his way of talking. Because when we have, uh, for example, uh, a homily on uh, the martyrs and how he praised them and the homily on uh, St. Claudius, we find a huge difference from the first side we say that this is not authentic. So vocabulary, theme, uh, ideas, 
and also details how he can uh, find the details of nowadays so these are more or less few uh, points that we can use it uh, to define because severus always has in mind this is the nature of Christ, how he can interpret the Bible. Hey? But when you find that just he narrating stories and stories and stories, that means it's not uh, his style at all. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have uh, several other questions, like you mentioned that um, even St. Severius is, 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 you know, celebrated as the second founder of the Coptic Church next to uh, Saint Mark, um, and uh, you know, you know, affirming or referring to Saint Severus by the Coptic Church and the Syriac Church in turn, you know, affirming to Saint Athanasius and Saint Cyril to express their orthodoxy. So, is there any tradition in uh, other Oriental Orthodox churches, like you know, the Armenian Church? You know, we have some questions, like you know, how the Armenian Church. Um, is there any? Um, like they do honor Saint Severius, or they use uh, his manitos or homilies in their liturgy. Yeah, for, uh, Armenian uh, honored, but I'm not uh, an Armenian rock. But I know, for example, one of the beautiful hymns uh, that was written by Severus of Antioch, which uh, 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 only begotten, uh, only begotten son, Obanogenes. Uh, it's translated in Georgian, in Armenian, and it is sung even in the Byzantine tradition, but as uh, I attribute it to Justinian, because I'm afraid to say that uh, uh, Severus uh, wrote this, but it's not the style Justinian. We don't, we can't uh, attribute it to Justinian, because Justinian, we don't have any theological. Uh, uh, treaties attributed to Justinian. We don't have any text, theologically speaking, of this standard uh, attributed to Justinian on the one hand. On the other hand, all what we get uh, from uh, Severus is just uh, it's a way it's, uh, to see how deep he is and how so I think that in the Severus, I have also a question that uh, why uh, can we make available notes on this uh, symposium? Uh, this, uh, it's, uh, you can find in my book, Severus of Antioch, you can find some, and I put a lot of uh, articles in academia, so you can find uh, this in academia, uh, some of my articles, so you can find this what make uh, Severus an important figure on the Oriental Orthodoxy. Uh, you know, uh, for uh, Severus, as I mentioned, that he is the one that he put all uh, in him, you can find all the father of the church. For example, his uh, uh, master work, the book of the Philadelphia, you find quotation from all the father of the church, 259, which sometimes are not uh, available in uh, other texts because in yes uh, uh, you can find uh, his text uh, uh, that sometimes we find that this text is taken from Cyril but it didn't survive to us uh, so this is very good uh, for us to to hear it and to see uh, I have what is the conflict? With? What is the conflict with the Byzantine tradition as it uh, relates to the saint? Can you just uh, quickly reflect on this question? Uh, uh, what is the conflict with the Byzantine tradition as it relates to the saints? Yeah, the, you know, the problem is the problem of uh, text and uh, in, uh, in terminology. They said that in uh, uh, there is three persons in uh, the Trinity, and in Greek they called three hypostases in the Trinity, and Jesus has uh, two uh, 
human and divinity. So this, they, can, uh, they call it also hypostasis, which make uh, a confusion because the virus of Antioch, I say, if you consider uh, Jesus has two hypostasis, that means we are uh, worshiping a quadrility and not Trinity. And uh, that's the main problem. In Latin, there is what we call persona and what we call natura. And here it was uh, clear, but because at that time they didn't give uh, they didn't give any definition what they understand by uh, hypostasis and what they understand by uh, uh, nature and uh, etc. Here it was more or less confusing, and that's why Severus as a good lawyer and a good philosopher, rejects this idea. But uh, in the nowadays, we all accept the definition because we start to say, uh, how about if we can make a definition of what we understand is and what we understand by hypostasis. And, and in fact, uh, this uh, nowadays, it's not nowadays, it's nearly exactly one century ago, there was a Belgian uh, priest and later became bishop. He's called Joseph Lebon. And Joseph Lebon, he uh, wrote his uh, thesis about Severus and he found, he called it Le Monophysis Severien. And in, uh, it was published in uh, 19... Uh, Eight, and he reconsidered his point in uh, 1951 and he found that all what's the conflict between uh, the Chalcedonian and non-Chalcedonian is verbal because they don't have definition of each word. Uh, can you just quickly reflect on this question, the relics of uh, St. Severius? Where is it kept? Is it still there? Do we have a church? Uh, yeah, the problem that uh, because uh, Severus of Antioch was very famous and uh, was very important for the Coptic Church, so uh, his relics were scattered all over uh, Egypt. So we have uh, a feast that uh, his uh, relics were translated to the uh, monastery of Hinaton, uh, nine miles west of Alexandria. But in the 11th century, we have, um, in the 9th century, we have in the history of the Patriarch that part of the relics were in El Farma. El Farma, it's uh, more or less uh, not far from Porsaid nowadays. Uh, that, and we have uh, uh, one who wrote uh, one of the contributors to the history of the patriarch called uh, Johanna Ibn Sa'ad al Zumi, mentioned that part of the relics of uh, Severus of Antioch uh, were in the monastery of uh, uh, Der el Baramos in Skates. And uh, later, in the 14th century, we have a homily by a bishop of Asyut saying that he took the relics of uh, Severus of Antioch and put it in the monastery of uh, Severus in the Mount of Asyut, in the uh, Mount of Arifa. So we have here, uh, and uh, in the beginning of the 18th century, we have a manuscript of uh, the monastery of Derisurian, and we have a reliquary which uh, contain, according to uh, to the manuscript, part of the relics of Derisurian of uh, of uh, Severus of Antioch. Hence, you can find that it's everywhere, but I can't tell you exactly which is which unless you have to make a DNA or something like this, but. You know, any uh, there are a lot of places in Egypt, as I said, that we have relics. And 
as you know, that relics are not always uh, there is the first uh, first hand relics, and there are second hand relics. For example, if you have uh, the saint where, uh, having a cross in his hand like this. So uh, when he died, uh, a church could take this cross and become a relic of the saint. So, uh, so this it's it's very complicated issue, but I'm just giving an overview about uh, the thing. Yeah, thank you, um, um, thank you so much. I mean, uh, we have a final question. Maybe uh, our beloved Archbishop can comment on that. Uh, so, does the Church in India have saints relics, or Church in India doesn't have saints Severius and relics? So, Trimeni, uh, would you quickly reflect on the uh, this question and maybe um, um, then you know reflect and then briefly reflect and then uh, conclude with the benediction. As I told you, because the fame of uh, Severus of Antioch each part of the world would claim part of uh, Severus of Antioch. So uh, I'm not uh, good to understand the Indian, but I, it could be there were a lot of trades between Egypt and India from the most ancient times. So they could bring part of the relics they could, or if not, if it's not a first hand relics, it could be, for example, something that was in contact with the body of uh, Severus of Antioch, for example. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you reflect on that and then do the con con conclusion? Uh, you are on mute, uh, uh, Trimini. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think uh, there are relics of uh, Severus in uh, in uh, uh, As I said, his relics were scattered all over Egypt, and uh, probably the place of his. Uh, but the burial place may, may be known there. Uh, as regarding uh, the influence of Severus, only through his writings and through the liturgy, liturgical texts uh, that Indian church is influenced by Severus. Especially we begin the Holy Kubono with the uh, sayings uh, or um, words of uh, the song of Severus. Um, uh, Severus, I think uh, his most important uh, writing, Philalethes, it was a uh, friend of, it, it, it is translated as friend of truth, it was a response to Florilegia, which was a pro calcironian and uh, against this uh, um, Severus wrote Philalethus. Um, many other writings and also his letters and also the cathedral homilies are very, very important uh, uh, for the in-depth study of Severus. I hope that more of our people would uh, uh, delve deep into the writings of Severus and uh, 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 write more about his uh, theological understanding. 
it is very interesting to see that the Western scholars nowadays uh, very much appreciate uh, Severus. Uh, I mean the uh, and uh, they some of them say that there are there isn't much uh, against uh, the position of the uh, of the Western Church or the Byzantine Church. More of misunderstandings prevailed, and that created problems. Anyway, new light is being shed on the great church father these days and I hope many would uh, uh, learn uh, uh, more of the writings of Severus and uh, write in our languages especially in Malayalam there isn't much good uh, work on Severus okay I enjoyed the speech of uh, Dr. Yuan Yusuf. Thank you very much, Doctor. And um, uh, I appreciate your erudition and uh, that knowledge, especially uh, tradition. Uh, I know that you are a profound scholar on Severus and uh, on behalf of the Serene Orthodox Church uh, and on my own behalf, I thank you. I wish you all the best. And I appreciate the questions of the participants. And uh, many are really working hard to understand the Church Fathers. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yusuf, and thank you, uh, beloved Tirumeni. Athrimeni, can you conclude with uh, uh, benediction? Yeah. <clears throat> Let us pray a few words. Almighty Lord, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this occasion to study the great Church Father Severus of Antioch, who is a common father of the Oriental Orthodox Churches. He has enlightened us through his writings, his letters, as well as uh, homilies. Uh, help us to understand his thoughts and also his struggles uh, so that in our times also we shall uphold the true faith and the true Christian um, understanding of uh, theology and we ask all blessings uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all the participants and today's uh, lecturer and May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, one and all, especially those who are watching the Uruho programs and supporting us. Uh, thank you once again, Tirumeni. Thank you once again, Dr. Yusuf, for your profound and um, um, in-depth knowledge that you, sh you could disseminate uh, through this platform. We'll, we'll catch up later. God bless us all. All glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.